As an example, from the baseline, you can move your opponent three or four steps. If I hit to the corners, all right, three or four steps. Now, if I move into mid-court, I can move my opponent five or seven steps, a little more of an angle. But when I get up close to the net, when I'm up here, I can angle the ball off from even the quickest opponents. Now, how would you like to hit a shot that even Coria or Hewitt couldn't get? In order to find out when you should go to the net, you need to find your short ball range. Now, what do I mean by short ball range? Short ball range is an area on the court where you can hit your approach shot. So say this area is around here, you can hit your approach shot and get to a good volley position. Good volley position would be halfway between the service line and the net. You want to get to this position just as or before your opponent hits the ball. So remember, good volley position halfway between the service line and net, right here, before your opponent hits the ball. Short ball ranges vary according to how fast the player is. As an example, let's say a fast player can hit a, an approach shot from this red dot area. So he comes up, red dot area, hits his approach, and he can get into that good volley position before his opponent hits the ball. Now, on the other hand, a slower player, if he tries to hit an approach shot from that red dot area, may come up, hit from that area, and only get to here behind the service line. Now he's vulnerable to passing shots and balls hit down at his feet. So a slower player may have to wait for a ball in the yellow dot area. So he can come up to the yellow dot, hit his approach, and still get to the ideal volley position before his opponent hits the ball. In your short ball range, play out some points with a pro and hit approach shots from different areas on the court. So hit your approach shot. As you're coming in, have the pro yell now as he's contacting the ball. Now, when he yells now, if you're up here in your ideal volley position, that ball was hit in your short ball range. On the other hand, if you're coming up and he yells now and you're behind that service line, that's not your short, short ball range. So, practice this, it's a great way to find your short ball range. Okay, I'm going to try and find my short ball range now with the help of Fabrice. He's going to yell now just before or as he's striking the ball. Now if I can get up to a, a good volley position halfway between the service line and the net, if I can get up into this area, I should be able to deal with any passing shot attempts. Let's give it a try. Notice as Fabrice is about to make contact, I'm reaching ideal volley position, which is approximately halfway between the net and the service line, and I'm beginning my split step. This will enable you to cut off your opponent's passing shots and to be more effective with your volleys. No. Uh. Notice here that as Fabrice is about to make contact, I have not reached an ideal volley position. I'm still behind the service line, which makes me vulnerable to passing shots and shots down at the feet. No.
technique. Just think of making a target for the oncoming ball. See, now, if you were to hit a ball to this side, to my forehand, okay, I'm just going to make a target for the oncoming ball. I see the ball coming to this side, I turn, I make the target. Notice I keep my left hand on the throat of the racket. That ensures that I turn my shoulders and also I won't bring the racket back too far. So just turn, keep that hand on. Once you get to here, then you can let go. Now you're going to step in with the foot that's furthest away from the ball. So the ball's on this side, my left foot's further away. I'm going to step in with that foot and just imagine that my hand is on the top of a table right now and I'm going to slide my hand out across the table. So I step and slide the hand out. It's just a short punching motion. Say the net is over there now. I'm in my ready position. I see the ball hit to this side. Remember, I turn and I just make a target for the ball. Now, I'm all set. I'm just going to step in with the foot further away from the ball and slide the hand across the tabletop. I step and slide the hand across. The contact point on that forehand volley is going to be about even with that front shoulder. And remember, too, to try and keep the racket head higher than the hand. If you notice, my racket head right now is higher than my hand. Now, that will ensure that you can keep the racket nice and firm because if the racket drops down, it's much tougher to control. So keep the racket head up, especially against passing shots that are hit with pace. You want to keep that racket head up slightly. And keep your swing short. You don't want to take a big swing on this. Just a short little punching motion. That's all you need on the forehand volley. Okay, two key points to remember on the volley. Number one, make a target for the oncoming ball. Number two, slide the hand across the tabletop with a short punching motion. Okay, if you want to go to the net, you need a reliable overhead. There's nothing worse than having that sitter right there and you dump it in the net or hit it long. But the overhead is the least practice shot in the history of tennis. So you've got to get out and practice this shot. It's a confident shot. It's not an easy shot trying to hit that ball dropping out of the sky. So get out and practice it. I've actually had students where they'll see a lob go up and they actually say, oh no. I mean, is it any wonder they're going to miss the ball with that kind of an attitude? So what I tell them is, you have to learn to love the shot. You've got to create a new signal in the brain. So instead of saying, oh no, when you see that ball go up, you should be thinking, oh yes, I love these shots. That way you'll start to create a new signal in the brain. Now, the, the overhead is basically the same as a service motion, only it has an abbreviated backswing. You know, on serve, you drop your hands, you bring the hands up. When you're in that ready position, or you do that split step rather, and you see that ball go up, you turn and bring your hands up right away. From here, the motion is the same. Same as the serve, just like you're, you're throwing a ball. Now, some players point with the finger, and some will turn a little more and point with the elbow. I like to turn a little bit more, point with the elbow, because it gives you a little more shoulder rotation, and it'll give you a little more juice on the overhead. But the key is you've got to get out there, practice the shot, and create the new signal then you'll rarely make mistakes on that overhead and you'll have a, a nice new signal in the brain when you get into a match.